Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are starting our fifth unit in the course in AP Biology, which is on heredity. It's how information from one organism, from one generation to the next, is passed down and the implications that that has for how life works, essentially. Because um, the goal of all living things, if you, you may have heard me say this before, but the goal of all living things is to survive just long enough so that it can reproduce and pass down its information. Um, how to make a new organism, the instructions for how to make a new organism to the next generation. Nothing lives forever, so something that life has to do is make sure that its information for building a new organism gets passed down, and that's what heredity is. It's transmission of traits from one generation to the next. Um, so that's really what this unit is going to be about. How and why and what are the implications of organisms passing down their traits, their certain characteristics, the things about them. How does it go from one generation to the next? All right. Um, and that'll be varied across of all the different types of life. And there's going to be lots of different rules and different math we can do, lots of different vari variations of like probability that we can find out. Um, to in, in order to make predictions about what subsequent generations are going to have um, in terms of their genes and their traits. All right, so in our last unit we discussed mitosis, and mitosis uh, we know is the process by which all somatic cells, which are all cells besides gametes, reproduce. They make two exact copies. All right, so we looked at mitosis at the end of last semester. Um, it's basically you know one cell just making exact copies as best as it can of its DNA. Um, and then splitting up the nucleus so that each one of its daughter cells gets exact copies of its DNA, which works, which works for uh, what we call somatic cells. Okay, but there's a there's a thing about life that you know if everybody is all the same, then it doesn't usually work out that well. Um, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so somatic cells like liver cells cheek cells, muscle cells, okay, they're going to divide and just make copies of themselves. But that doesn't work for like a human being. A human being can't just make a copy of itself and be like, oh, here you go, here's a clone. Like, not, not going to happen, right? Um, so what we're talking about here, this is called asexual reproduction, in which a single individual is the sole parent and it passes on the copies of its genes to its offspring. It's asexual, as in not sexual reproduction. All right, so uh, more complex organisms they're going to do sexual reproduction, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, but in order for us to get an understanding of heredity, we got to go through heredity and genetics 101 here. Um, parents, which are organisms that are going to you know, produce offspring, they pass down coded information in the form of DNA in the form of genes, which are called hereditary units. Um, so genes are what I like to think of them. They're, they're little sections in the code book, there are little sentences in the, uh, the instruction booklet of life, which is DNA. Um, and each sentence that's read by the cell produces a different protein, and that produ protein produces a different trait. Um, and the variety of genes produces a variety of characteristics, right? So multicellular organisms pass down different combinations of genes to their offspring, which produces variation. And variation is a very, very, very important concept. Um, in biology, and for the re for the rest of this year, actually, it's a huge concept. Um, life needs to be different from one another. That's really, really important. And how does it go about doing that? Well, that's what we're going to spend this unit talking about. How do cells produce variation, um, and why do cells produce variation? That's going to be uh, some ma some of the main topics in this unit. All right, so. Not all organisms, definitely not all organisms, reproduce just by making a clone of themselves and passing down those genes. We get different different variations. We get different combinations of this uh, this genetic code book, these instructions for life. Okay, um, so most multicellular organisms they don't undergo asexual reproduction. They go undergo sexual reproduction, which means two parents give rise to two offspring or to gives rise to offspring that have unique combinations of genes. Okay, so we're not talking about one cell making two cells and they're just like kind of clones. Uh, we end up with different cells with different combinations of instructions, new sets of instructions, a new shuffling of the genetic deck um, in order to make new organisms. Everybody's unique, okay? That's something that we're going to talk about 
you as a human being, in terms of your genetics, you are unlike anyone that has ever existed or will ever exist. Your combination of genes that you have in your each one of your cells is completely unique. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, so the cells that are going to really be doing this, uh, what we call sexual reproduction, a mix and matching of different combinations of these instructions for life, they're called gametes. Gametes are the cells that transmit genes from one generation to the next. And, you know, our main two gametes in animals are sperm cells and egg cells. Okay, there's, uh, there's different life cycles of plants, for example. Plants have two phases of their life. One's called a gametophyte and one's called a sporophyte. Uh, um, and gametophytes produce gametes and sporophytes produce spores, which are, but it's a whole thing. Um, but gametes are going to be the cells that are carrying that information from one generation to the next. Okay, so the act of you know fertilization is a fusion of the instructions that you get from mom and the instructions that you get from dad, okay, and then you combine them together and you get the instructions for your cells to build you. It's pretty spectacular. Each cell, one of these cells, the sperm and the egg, carries one set of what we call chromosomes, which are condensed DNA from one from each parent. Okay, so you get a set of chromosomes that are shuffled around from mom, you get a set of chromosomes that are shuffled around from dad, and what happens? Well, you get a, two sets of chromosomes, you become a diploid, um, a diploid organism, meaning you have two sets of chromosomes, and you've got this kind of weird combination, a brand new combination of your mom's genes and your dad's genes um, to make you. It's pretty spectacular. If I get all like nerded out about this, I apologize. Um, but when two cells fuse, they produce a unique combination of genes and chromosomes from both parents. All right, so you are a brand new combination, never before seen combination of genes. Congratulations. You are unique. Unless, you know, I don't know if anybody watching this is, but unless you're an identical twin, then you're not unique. You and your twin are unique, but you yourself are not unique. Sorry. Um, so in humans, each of these gametes has 23 chromosomes. So you may have heard of this DNA testing site before. It's called 23andMe. Why is it called 23andMe? Well, it's because um, each gamete has 23 chromosomes. And when you combine the two sets of 23, what do you get? You get 46. But you have 23 sets of chromosomes. You have 23 uh, pairs of chromosomes, all right? So uh, this letter N here is just representing the number. Uh, this is just representing a normal set of chromosomes. Um, so your gametes are what we call N, they're haploid, and uh, when, your cell, when the sperm and egg combine and fertilization occurs, you get two sets of chromosomes, and we signify that by 2N, and those are called diploid cells. All right, like I just said right here, so meiosis, which we'll get into more detail about in the next topic, it's cell division that produces haploid gametes. Okay, so the, how do we produce those cells that are going to get a new combination of DNA to combine together and make a brand new organism, that's through meiosis. Not mitosis, meiosis, okay? And we're going to be discussing differences between those. Um, haploid cells, like I was just saying, have one single set of chromosomes, and diploid cells have two sets of chromosomes. Okay, so if you take a look at our comparison between mitosis and meiosis here, okay, mitosis, what we looked at last unit, you know, a diploid cell with two sets of chromosomes is going to make copies of its sets of chromosomes and make sure that each one of its daughter cells gets an exact copy of all of those sets of chromosomes. But that's not the case in meiosis. Okay, if we want to reshuffle the genetic deck, we got to do some other stuff here. We got to, uh, well, first copy those chromosomes, then split them up once, then split them up again so that we have gametes with each one set of chromosomes. And then guess what? One plus one is two, right? You get two brand new sets of chromosomes once fertilization occurs and those gametes from two different organisms fuse. Okay, so you get a brand new organism. It's super cool. Um, to, uh, as as uh, mentioned before, excuse me, humans have 23 pairs of what we call homologous chromosomes. So each one of these sets here is what we call homologous chromosomes. They are homologs. They are two chromosomes, but they belong in a set, okay? So we got 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. This is what we call a karyotype. Um, when you lay out all the chromosomes and kind of put them into this nice organized pattern um, out uh, to, to observe like this, this is called a karyotype. Um, and so if we're looking at a human karyotype, we can see that there are 23 distinct pairs of chromosomes. 
okay? So you got two sets of 22, two sets of 21. You have an X and an X or an X and a Y. You got two sets of chromosome number one. Okay, so meiosis results in cells with one unique set of 23 chromosomes. 22 are what we call autosomes, okay, which are, you know, these 22 up to here, and one what we call a sex chromosome, which we call X or Y, all right? So if you have two X chromosomes, you're a female uh, biologically. If you have two, an X and a Y, you are biologically male, and you will be born with male characteristics. If you have XX, that means you'll be born with female characteristics. Uh, biologically, again. All right, um, so mitosis and meiosis are both types of cell division that involve segregation of chromosomes. So while these are both types of cell division and they, and they both involve the segregation or the separation of chromosomes from one another, okay, they are different in that mitosis produces diploid cells. It produces two diploid cells and meiosis produces four, four haploid cells. Each one of those cells has one set of chromosomes, while in during mitosis you have two sets of chromosomes, okay? And the daughter cells of mitosis are exactly the same. Meiosis, they're all different from one another. It's pretty spectacular, all right? And like I just said, mitosis results in two identical diploid cells, and meiosis results in four non-identical haploid cells. All right, I believe that, yep, that is it for this lesson, for this topic. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll talk more about meiosis in our next video. See ya.